Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by and by viewers like you. So we're back at Imaginary Wars after quite a long break. Um, we are playing just a standard game. Our league has finished up at this point. So we're playing 1,000 points today. We're doing CEF versus North. And on the CEF side, I have pulled out the Overlord again for the 1,000 points today. So I have the Overlord Heavy Hover Tank, which is my army commander, priority level 4. Uh, inside, I've loaded a whole bunch of my flails with rocket launchers, and I like it because it's got the big doors so I can throw them out the back and they can activate the same turn. And I have some light hover tanks with Gatling laser cannons, so I mixed it up a little bit with the Overlord, uh, just assets it has, so we'll see how that goes. My objectives for this game, I need to wipe out the enemy strike squad, which my opponent is currently deploying right here. I need to wipe out the fire support squad, which is back here, and my overlord needs to break through into his deployment zone. So we did the diagonal deployment zone here and here, and we are playing in the Badlands. We rolled up an unusual event, which is variable turn limits, so we're going to play anywhere between four and six turns this time, which is a little bit different for objective-wise. You can't plan ahead of time. So my tactics, I'm planning on blitzing, so I'm going to blitz and attempt to get into his deployment zone, offload the flails and cause as much carnage as I can. Hover tanks is going to be harassers on the side, hoping to keep him boxed in with the Gatling lasers. We will see how that goes. I'll turn this over to my opponent in a second here, and he will go over his army list and the objectives he rolled up. Alright, so I have my deployment finished over here. So, over there with the actual proper movement markers are my, is my strike squad. My three jaguars are over there, including my army commander and his objective. And the two hunters are sitting there. I have my thunder hammer in as much cover as I can provide on this board currently. Um, for the most part, I'm going to try and take out his... Heavy Hover Tank's turret, which is my assassinate objective. I need to try and hold my little boxcar over here, take the building where the coke bottle is sitting, and protect my army commander over there. So hopefully I can take out that turret without too many casualties and maybe try and stop him from getting his little flails over here. Right, we are back at the end of turn one, so not a lot happened this turn, so I won the activation and opted for my opponent to activate first. So he activated his fire support squad, which is the Grizzlies back here. Uh, they stood by for coordinates, which was not surprising, waiting for their mortars. Uh, on my activation, I activated the light hover tanks on this side over here, so they scooted up from here to here, top speed. Uh, so top speed for one action, second action was standby for coordinates with the medium rockets. So I was hoping to get some uh, large AoEs and whack him with... Uh, those rockets. Next, my opponent activated his recon squad. So the recon squad over here, the cheetah moved up, spotted to this tank with the target designator. Since they have a really good designator rating, they saw him through the wall uh, because they just needed to see part of the hull. And the guided mortars fired guided into him. Thankfully, due to my good dice rolls, even though I couldn't see him and attack from above, uh, modifiers, my top speed saved me, even with the stun token due to the second guided mortar, I dodged out of the way, and the armor took the second hit, because it was only one margin, so no damage on them yet. Uh, I then activated the hull of my overlord, which moved from behind its cover over to here, stayed at top speed, uh, fired some shots at the hunter that did start in the open over there, uh, the Gatling laser missed, I fired um, some auto cannons as well, they didn't do anything. Thing. And then I used We're in Trouble for two uh, and spotted, sorry, instead of the autocannons, which fired the rockets, which missed. After that, 
It was... My opponent's go, he activated the Thunder Hammer, moved his Recon Drone out to get a nice shot on the turret. The Field Gun caused a box of damage. Uh, the Rockets missed. I don't know how they scattered and missed something that big, but they did. After that, the Macro Cannon activated, targeted the Hunter that was there, and missed. So for those of you that are familiar with the Macro Cannon, it's basically whatever it touches, uh, even on a margin of zero due to the AP disintegrates the target, so I was hoping for that, but missed even with a reroll. Uh, I then gave him an anti-tank uh, missile, which missed, and then decided it was time to end my shooting and go, we're in trouble, which turned out to be a good plan, because his strike squad activated, lots of bazookas, open shots on the turret, and if I wouldn't have done the we're in trouble, I would have took another two boxes. So, things are looking okay for now. I am going to be back at the end of turn two. Alright, so we are back at the end of turn two, and as most games happen, lots of carnage. So... I won the activation and I immediately activated the hull of the tank, it hopped over the pool, it fired a whole bunch of rockets at these guys over here, I did uh, probably about six assorted boxes with the heavy rockets on them, I uh, did we're in trouble for one, so that was my hull, uh, after that my opponent activated and he activated with his uh, fire support squad, which was the grizzlies back there and he put some shots into the tank, he put a box on the turret um, with the fire. yep, with the coordinated fire. After that, the turret activated because I knew what was coming. And I hit with a macro cannon, which was very happy. So I equaled uh, the dice roll on a Jaguar, which disintegrated. Fired a heavy laser at another Jaguar, which killed it. And uh, it went, we're in trouble for one, to hope to mitigate damage. The fire support squad then activated. And put two boxes on the turret. After that, recon squad activated. it was, yep, the recon, and the killer anti-tank weapon, this guy here with rate of fire one on the medium auto cannon, killed the turret for the last box, which was hilarious if you watch my reports. It always seems to happen, medium auto cannons are tank hunting weapons, mark my words, it happened again. So that was that turn, I activated the light hover tanks which were over here, they scooted up over to this side, they put some damage on guys back here. They overkilled the cheetah that was here with uh, their Gatling laser guns. Um, after that, he became my new army commander because the turret died. And the flails couldn't activate because they're at top speed and bailing out at top speed is bad news. The um, hunters over here activated. So the GP squad activated. Strike. Oh, sorry, strike squad activated. Uh, put some missiles and rockets into the tanks. Tanks moving fast, dodged. And other than that, we are going to be back at the end of turn three. Back at the end of turn three. And it's been another good turn here. So we rolled for activation. We both rolled threes. And I got the plus one for having fewer squads, which means Earth activated first. I activated these light hover tanks. So the first one scooted around the corner and land basted the Grizzly with some laser cannons and rockets. The other one did a big loop and put some boxes on uh, this guy over here with its uh, laser cannon. After that, my opponent activated his... Um, thunder Hammer. What's your Thunder Hammer? The Thunder Hammer fired the field gun, put a box on the hull, and put some rockets into the tank, which skillfully dodged. After that, it was the tank that activated, and who said the hull can't kill anyone? It killed... The Jaguar in the back with the heavy anti-aircraft uh, killed this poor guy with a heavy anti-aircraft and a Gatling gun. And uh, the rockets fired at this guy and missed. After that, it was the um, fire support squad. The fire support squad went standby for coordinates and coordinate fire. Um, then it was my go. I had no activations. So my opponent activated his recon squad. The recon squad target designated this guy. He fired at me with the mortars. Only got three margins, which bounced off the hull, unfortunately, due to the reinforced front armor. And he moved his ferret up over there to start taking objectives. And then he activated his strike squad, what was left of it, which was this guy. Uh, he came up, he placed a grenade underneath the tank. He did a box to himself and a box to the tank. Which was, uh, it could have been really bad for both of them because he rolled a six for his placed attack, which potentially could have killed both of them for attack from below. So, for those of you who want to kill tanks, placed grenades underneath, 
It sucks into the air vents, gets armor piercing, which is deadly dangerous for them. All right, we'll be back at the end of turn four. All right, so we are back at the end of turn four. And this time my opponent won the activation. And with his activation, he's gonna refresh my memory. I believe it was the Thunder Hammer first. Yep. Okay, so the Thunder Hammer activated first. And did a whole it lot of that. Put a field gun into him. Did one box, sorry not one box, one margin, which was not quite enough because it was 22 versus 24. Uh, and that was it for the Thunder Hammer. After that, I activated my hull of my tank. And, oh wow, did it roll amazingly well this turn. So it stopped, it vaporized the hunter that was there with the heavy anti-aircraft cannons. It rolled box cars and just annihilated it. Hit him with heavy Gatling laser cannon and killed him. And um, that was about it. So killed two guys, which was pretty good for not having a lot of stuff on the hull. After that, it was the Grizzlies go because the strike squad was dead. Uh, they activated and put some damage on this tank, so heavy guided mortar, two boxes. After that, my tanks went, so this tank overkilled the cheetah that was sitting here, shot it in the back of the Gatling laser cannon, and the other tank fired rockets and a Gatling laser cannon over here, did two boxes on the Grizzly, one box on the Thunder Hammer from the rockets. So, as the last activation, the flails jumped out of the large doors, so large doors allow me to activate once um, they've been released. So the flails jumped out and headed towards the ferret, who's claiming the objective. And these guys took cover behind the rocks. So we will be back at the end of turn five. We rolled up random game length, and my opponent rolled a four, which means next turn is the end. So we will see what happens. So we are back at the end of turn five, since this was the last turn due to random game length. So what happened? We rolled off and I won the initiative. This heavy hover tank decided to stop, put a Gatling laser cannon and rockets into these guys, annihilated the Grizzly, damaged the Thunder Hammer for one. Uh, this heavy hover tank scooted around the corner, put critical damage on him with the Gatling laser and the rockets. My opponent activated his Thunder Hammer, got six margins on the tank, which if we had a crater, we'd put one there. Because <laughs> the tank rolled a one one two which was zero for its defense modifier, so um, it died, quite convincingly. Uh, after that, I activated I my under it. <laughs> heavy hover tank. Uh, it spent its entire turn shooting at the hunter that was here. I quote-unquote was here, because um, he got overkilled by the plethora of shots into him. Um, so yeah, he died. That was my hover tank. Uh, my opponent activated his uh, jaguar here. He put critical damage on this tank with his bazooka, spent a command point, and fired some light rockets at it. I rolled really badly, he rolled really good, and he did his one box and killed the other army commander, which we thought was hilarious since everyone else in my army's flails, so there is no valid army commander. The brains and jars will float there wondering what to do. After that, the brains and jars, I mean flails, activated, and uh, they basically moved up, contested this objective, uh, popped out here, killed that poor hunter there, and uh, that was game. So, breakdown for points, we had on the north side, the north got their assassinate target for one point. Uh, they got their hold objective here for one point, or not one point, sorry, two points for a total of three. They did not protect their commander, which is dead, and this was contested by the flails, so that was zero, so they got three points. For the CEF, uh, they wiped out the recon, oh sorry, not recon, fire support for two, and they got their, was it, yeah, strike for two, sorry. I keep messing up here, getting late in the day. So it was strike for two, and half of the recon for one. They failed in their blockade because, or blockade, breakthrough, because those tanks died this turn, and that was them. So 3-3, three, three, the tie break goes to the north and their butt wheels that are still alive. So it's 3-3, three, three. they're PL3, uh, CEF was PL4, so tiebreak goes to them, so victory for the north, even though we both agreed that it was a bloodbath and both sides would be very unhappy with the results of this as virtually everyone is either damaged or dead. Okay, so thank you for watching. Uh, tactical segment we'll be back for in a sec here. All right, so we had requested uh, tactical segment from our viewers, so tactics here.
Uh, in general, I think things went uh, reasonably well for me. Uh, my blitz worked well. I always expect the turret to die on my tank, so I try to do as much damage as I can ahead of time. So it killed some targets of opportunity, uh, killed some bazookas. Uh, my opponent, I forced him to choose between the tanks and this. So I put him in a bad position by moving around and annihilating his fire support in the back, which really saved the hull of my tank because he needed the field guns and heavy mortars to damage it. My failing was not killing this butt wheel. I think that if my flails would have popped out earlier, it would have been better. So, um, killing him earlier would have been good. With flails, probably should have took them out earlier from the tank to do more damage. The other thing is these tanks, I probably should have been a little bit more conservative with them. Especially this uh, army commander here. Uh, he would have lived and I would have gotten my breakthrough objective for one point instead of two, which would have made the difference. So, uh, should have been a little bit smarter there. I got too eager to annihilate as much as I could. And uh, other than that, uh, things were... Pretty reasonable across the board. I was quite happy with my game, and I am much happier with this army design. Uh, so dropping the uh, Grell and a few other the tank upgrades to get the light hover tanks was just golden for uh, being able to put multiple pressure points on my opponent. So I'll turn this over, and he can talk about what he was doing. All right. So north here. Uh, Major failing was not protecting my flank over here. If I had managed to keep that one grizzly right there alive from his two uh, hover tanks, I think I probably would have been able to take out the hull there, especially since I would have been distracted trying to take the two tanks out. Um, all in all, though, I made some very, very lucky rolls, particularly to take out these last two hover tanks over here to stop his uh, breakthrough. Um... I probably should have moved more of my recon gears over here to try and get more to uh, outnumber his flails there. But all in all, I'm actually fairly happy with how well the army performed, particularly with uh, grenade drops. Did a entertaining amount of damage. And as usual, my Thunderhammer did ridiculously well for its light field gun. So all in all, I'm fairly happy with how it came out.